Good morning. Um, so I have a video on how to fill a, a five-sided hole and I figured I'd uh, actually do a short video on how I would build my models and, and get to that uh, layout with the primary and secondary surfaces so that you can fill that final hole with the, the tertiary surfaces. And so the the way I like to build things is with uh, theoretical edges and then blending them out. And so here I have three surfaces set up that are very clean. Um, let me escape out of this. So if I turn on the control point for this really quick, you'll see that I have four control points in this direction and only two in this direction because these two surfaces are straight extrusions. And then I have a plane uh, in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I have this theoretical edge. I know that I want that. And then I want this intersection uh, as a theoretical edge as well. So I'm going to just trim back um, these surfaces. So I'm going to select all three of them. And then I can delete out the stuff that I don't want. So now I have my Y branch with my theoretical sharps. And if I join this together, then the reason I build this manually is because the fill a tool will actually fail uh, in this instance. It cannot build what we want. What we want um, in this particular case is a a chordal fillet with a distance of 11 millimeters across and then two chordal fillets on, on these two edges um, with a 8 millimeter fillet across. So if we try the uh, fillet edge command, we can build this and if we do uh, trim and join yes and distance between rails is the option that we want and we want to set everything to 11 millimeters between the rails gives us a preview and we can accept that result. So it builds this, but then when we try to build this, select that edge, that edge, and that edge, and now we're going to set all to 8 millimeters, you'll see that that is not exactly the result that we were hoping to get. Um, so you have to build this manually. And the way I go about this is that I built my uh, surface fillets without trimming them and then I trim them back manually and fill in the final uh, blend. So let's do that. So we go fill the edge again and we're going to start with this guy and instead of eight that we want that distance between rails we're going to turn off trim and join and we're going to set everything to 11. That builds this surface and we're going to accept that. So now I have a secondary surface in here that is my first um, transition fillet and then I'm going to build two separate ones for these so we're going to do fillet edge again we're going to build this edge and now instead of 11 between the edges we're going to go 8 millimeters and we're going to accept that and we're going to do that one more time I'm going to build that and that one we can accept like right out of the gate so now this is kind of a mess but we're kind of almost there we know that these will intersect here and then we need to transition to that larger fillet and so the first thing we want to do is take these two secondary surfaces and trim those back to that intersection point and the best way to do that i believe is with the split command so we're going to use an isa curve to split the surface and we're going to trim it right at that intersection that's one repeat that use an ISA curve and right at that intersection. So these we no longer need. We can get rid of that. And so now we have two blend surfaces that intersect right at that point here. Turn everything back on. And so now we need to trim back this guy. And that guy, we need a, um, a blend in between these to transition from this smaller radius to the larger radius. So we're going to actually put a um, set that current. We're going to put a blend curve in between those guys. So we're going to go from this edge to that edge. And it'll default to the end, but we can grab this point and drag it back. And you see that it's inflecting. And then right when the inflection stops um, is where I want it roughly. So here we have something that is trying to be curvature continuous to this edge and then goes over to this edge and we got rid of that inflection point by moving this. This is purely an aesthetic uh, uh, choice so you can move it backwards, forwards, you can make it just tangent but we're going to accept this result from now for now. 
And then we can split this surface back um, with the split command as well. So we're going to split again, and we're going to use an ISO curve. We're going to split that surface at that edge, and now we can delete that. And that will allow us, if we show everything again, select that surface and that surface, isolate those. Uh, now we can put a blend curve in between these two edges uh, very easily. Blend curve from there to there and accept that result. Show that. So now we have enough information here to trim back all these edges um, and create our opening. So the, the way there's a couple ways of doing it. The way I like to do it is to actually convert some of these edges um, and then uh, join them and trim everything back. So we're going to do that. We're going to just hide this for a second. We're going to go dupe edge, which stands for duplicate edge. And we're going to put them all on our current layer. And we're going to duplicate everything here and accept that result. And then I'm going to select these guys and join them. Join those guys. Curve, curve join that guy, and then finally this guy, that guy, and that guy. Join those. So now if I turn off, let's bring back our primary surfaces. If I turn off my uh, secondary surfaces for a bit here, you can see that I have all these curves, and these curves uh, because we created these transition surfaces, these curves will lie on the primary surfaces. And we can use these curves to trim back our opening. So if we do trim, we're going to select this curve. And we're going to trim back. Oh, sorry. These are uh, attached, so we're going to explode that first. So now we have individual surfaces. Now we can trim them back. So take that edge, trim this back. Repeat the trim, select that guy, trim that back. Repeat the trim, select this guy, and trim that back. So now if I bring back my secondary surfaces, those are nicely in here. I can turn off my curves for a second. Set current, turn off my curves. And you'll see that I have this four-sided opening, or sorry, uh, I have this five-sided opening that we can now fill with the technique that I have in my other uh, video about uh, filling a five-sided hole. So I figured I'd just do a basic um, video on, on how you get to the point from theoretical edges to blending back. The, the main thing you want to remember is when you blend stuff back, um, if you know your design intent, start with the, late, the largest radius first, which in this case was an 11 millimeter chordal fillet and go to the smaller radii. And so here we have two 8mm um, chordal fillets, so we built the, the largest fillet first, and then we built the smaller fillets, and then we create our edges to trim everything back. So if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, um, please consider uh, subscribing to the channel. And if you have uh, suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below, and I'll see if I can get to it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.